Hello, Scorpio. Welcome to your weekly reading for June 17th to the 23rd. This is for Scorpio and Scorpio Rising, and we're going to get right into it. Look what just fell out. Oh, come on. Come on. This is so you. That's a wink from the universe. A uh, little peekaboo. If it shows up in your spread, you know, is a really, really big sign. The lover's card. How amazing. How amazing. You just came out of uh, Jupiter being in your seventh house for an entire year of partnerships and relationships. Anyway, this is about this week, June 17th to the 23rd. You're probably already feeling a lot of changes happening for you. Okay. We have just come out of some really significant, rare aspects that are just propelling you forward. You are feeling the winds of change and they all happened in the past two months. So you could feel a lot of changes happening and you are going to feel it this week. It really is like, uh, like a starburst commercial. All right. The juice is loose. Uh, let me know if you get that reference. I'm not even sure if, if anyone will get that reference. Anyway, uh, we kick it off on Monday. You see that this is also, this week is a big shift. It's a huge shift as we move into cancer season. This is going to be major because because we kick it off with Mercury conjuncting Venus and Cancer. Now, Mercury and Venus are moving into Cancer at the same time, at the same degree. This is a conjunct. This is powerful. This is that powerful charge. Okay. Now, Cancer is your ninth house. Cancer rules your ninth house of spirituality, your belief system, how you see things. You're going to start seeing things with like more emotional investment, more heart applied to it. Okay. This is going to be that time. You know, the ninth house is also long distance since travel wouldn't be surprised if a lot of y'all are traveling or working with people overseas or dating people overseas uh it's also publishing you've got you've got all this energy for a month in publishing broadcasting write that book write that book that's what all that gemini energy is doing gemini is the third i mean that's communication that's writing that's researching write that book all right uh scorpios work on those books uh and it's also education there could be something new that you're learning okay something with higher education as well. Now, with Mercury conjuncting Venus, this is going to be major. Like I said, it's, uh, you know, uh, your BFF, Cancer, okay? So it is a water sign, really, really just entering bear mode, all right? And when I say bear mode, I'm talking about Care Bears. I'm talking about Mama Bear. I'm talking about Berenstein Bears. It's all about home and family and love and relationships and 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 anything that has to do with uh, really just putting your heart out there. Okay, wearing your heart on your sleeve. Have you know feeling you know your heart? What is it? The heartstrings or or you know those things. Anyway, romance even is going to be really highlighted too. But through this karmic spiritual uh, lens, like honestly, you will feel this shift in a big way with this conjunction. You see, it's starting at zero degrees. It's starting this new story for you, all right? In uh, everything that I just mentioned, all those ninth house matters. Uh, really, really a big focus on loved ones for y'all. It's got to be really nice. This new chapter in your life, uh, Venus and Mercury are like arm in arm right now, which is really nice. And Venus and Cancer, by the way, uh, Venus and Cancer is, Venus is going to be here until July 11th. All right. So you got Venus here for a while. You got Venus here for a while. And that's all about compassion and, and kindness and even patience. But matters of the heart is going to be a really big thing for you now. Okay. Venus and Cancer, very nurturing energy, a lot of loyalty energy as well. Protective energy. Think about Cancer, the crab, a lot of protection. Okay. In terms of home, family, love, ones. You're going to really, really, really resonate with this, uh, especially because actually it's not up here, but you know, because I, 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 you know, I only do moon transits when it's really necessary or I'll mention them, but the moon's going to be in your sign, Scorpio, for the first half of this week. And you being a water sign, that's double the emotions. That's double the emotions. I would not be surprised if you see like, um, a baby in a stroller or like a puppy, okay, or puppy on the street or, you know, a really nice, you know, box of French fries, whatever it is, you are going to feel emotionally moved, maybe even like, oh, I want that. I love that. Like that kind of energy. Okay. Remember your monthly forecast. I talked about Venus and cancer. It's that beautiful softness, beautiful softness, like lying in bed with your dog or your, you know, 
kids or children or your lover, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's got to feel feel very, very, very nice. And you can even feel very creatively moved around this time as well. Okay. Now, uh, Mercury moving into Cancer, that's going to be all month. Remember, Cancer is very emotionally driven. And so you are going to be communicating and thinking in ways with matters of the heart. Okay. Again, uh, just very empathetic, very sympathetic, very loving, healing the way that you speak. Okay. It's going to be really nice. A lot of intuitive energy here. You know, you and Cancer both being very too intuitive signs. So really heightening your intuition. So it's going to feel really nice for you. That nurturing energy is going to be really nice. Uh, very, very thinking with your heart. Okay. And you will start feeling a slowdown. Cancer season is very different from Gemini season. All right. And Mercury and Cancer, by the way, it's like poetry in motion. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. Now, Thursday, you see the sun moves into Cancer. We officially move into Cancer season, but we also officially move into summer. I'm so excited for this. And so is Ruby, little co-host. She missed y'all, Scorpio. She missed y'all. Uh, and uh, and winter in the Southern Hemisphere. But regardless, it's solstice. Big changes happening. Big changes happening, all right? It's also the longest day of the year. So you got extra time in that day. You got extra time on Thursday to do things that your heart desires to speak what the, you know, very uh, lovingly, all right? Uh, uh, it's got to be a really nice time. And remember, the sun, you know, is in the moon sign, right? The moon rules Cancer. So with the fact that Mercury, uh, Mercury, Mercury and Venus are there too, it really is going to set this like vibe, just really uh, seeking and feeling that security and relationships and love and home and family and all that good stuff, but also your own spirituality, okay? Your own spirituality, a lot of healing energy. Remember, Cancer is a very feminine side. So uh, really touching, uh, tapping into your like that feminine side of you, okay? That soft side. So really, really pulling at your heartstrings. That's the thing, pulling at your heartstrings. Uh, even wearing your heart in your sleeve, like it really is going to be uh, those type of moments and a lot of healing. And don't forget, the moon will be in your sign the first half of the week, the moon emotions and even intuition. Now, the moon will oppose Mars, okay? Mars, your traditional ruler, all right? You know, Mars is in Taurus in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Now, what I want you to think, this is how this is playing out this week. We have a lot of air and a lot of water energy. And I say that because Jupiter just moved into Gemini and this is fresh. Jupiter just moved into Gemini, an air sign just a few weeks ago. It's going to be there for a year. Pluto just moved into Aquarius. Pluto, your modern ruler, just moved into Aquarius uh, this earlier this year. And yes, it's new. Pluto's, Pluto, it's going to be in Aquarius for 20 years. It's a slow moving planet. It moved like a degree since it moved into Aquarius. But uh, so those are two air signs, right? Now you've got Venus, Mercury, and the sun in Cancer, water sign. But then don't forget Saturn and Neptune are also in Pisces. So a lot of water energy. And so when I talk about family and matters of home and loved ones, that's going to be a really big deal for you. This week, you are the sign that's going to feel it the most. And the reason why is because you've got Saturn and Neptune and Pisces in your fifth house, family, children, love, relationships. You have Pluto in Aquarius in your fourth house, home, loved ones, parents, children. Uh, like uh, you see that overlap there. And then We'll get to the full moon in Capricorn, but Capricorn, your third house, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, and even neighbors, you see that out of all the signs, you have the most overlap when it comes to home matters, okay? When it comes to your domestic sector, and if you want to throw in Mars and, and, and Uranus and Taurus... It's your seventh house of partnership. So that could also sway toward home, toward your significant other. So out of all the signs, Scorpio, you are going to feel this cancer energy the most. You're going to feel this home energy the most. These home vibes, snuggly energy. It's going to be really nice. Now, what I want you to do is like imagine a skipping stone on the surface of a lake. Okay, like doo -doo 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 -doo, right. And I say that because remember, I said it's all this air energy and all this water energy and it's the surface of the lake that divides the you know the the air and 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 the water all right now mars and uranus and taurus taurus, taurus is an earth sign so it's that rock okay so that's what's really happening this week but it's as if the rock was thrown by a 2 year old okay 
bloop, bloop. <laughs> it's just very little ripples. And that's because there's that slowdown with Mars and Taurus. There's a slowdown with uh, cancer season. All right. So this is a time to really just be present, be aware, appreciate everything's in your everything in your physical physical world appreciate the things that uh, uh that bring you gratitude it's that slow down for you to feel the love okay instead of just moving really fast and fast and fast have that slow down all right things are happening for you and this is a time to really enjoy all this abundance and, and blessings especially in your domestic sector okay and one of the reasons why i say that is because uh we've just come out of those neptune saturn squares where you see the sun will square Neptune now all right so remember I talk a lot more about this in your last week's reading if you didn't see your last week's reading Neptune is at 29 degrees it's a critical degree Neptune and Saturn are about to go retrograde both the two planets that are in Pisces in your fifth house of love romance joy pleasure family children creativity all right uh, uh, self uh, 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 expression procreation and so Remember, Neptune is that fog, it's that veil. You got to break through it. Okay, you got to break through it. You got to know what you want and be your authentic self. It's like being at a vending machine. You got your dollar bill in the thing, okay? But you're standing there and you're like, do I get the do I get the combos or do I get the Fritos or you know the box of raisins? Whatever it is, whatever it is, you really got to know. You really got to know what it is. You got a lot of different options, but you know there's that haze of Neptune that's saying, okay, we're gonna make you want all of it. You gotta know what you want, okay? Because when you know, when you are your authentic self, when you are facing your truths, and you make the right decision. OK, you make the right decision and then it's so satisfying. OK, you probably got the Twizzlers, didn't you, Scorpio? Now, Friday, now we come to the full moon in Capricorn. So this is why this is such a big deal in terms of knowing what you not know, uh, knowing who you are and being your true, authentic self. OK, and knowing your truth is because of this full moon in Capricorn. Now, if you saw your uh, monthly forecast, I talked about this. It's a very rare, unique full moon in Capricorn because it's happening at one degree. It's just entering. Listen. It's happening at one degree. Next month, we have uh, a full moon that's also in Capricorn. So we have two Capricorn full moons back to back. That rarely ha that's it. That's rare. OK. And so that one's happening at 29 degrees to the same day, August 21st. OK, this one's on July 21st. And so remember that this is just part one of something coming to culmination in your life, something coming to a, a turning point. Remember, full moons illuminate. OK, so seeing what it is. All right. And really being part of this story, really being part of this process of this full moon where it's it's saying something's got to end something's got to go okay and remember Capricorn rules their third house so sure it's siblings aunts uncles cousins neighbors uh as well as short distance travel but third house really is communication it's communication so there could be a something in terms of uh you know uh that has to do with communications or uh even writing researching uh, learning something new and so for y'all it just may be something that's very like okay i've reached this point i'm moving on to this next stage of my life okay because remember these full moons can be uh turning points all right especially with the fact that you have all this cancer energy in your ninth house uh, the way that you see things so it could be a shift in the way that you're seeing things with you know siblings aunts uncles cousins neighbors and whatnot even you know short distance travel and that could be coming to an end all right with everything that's happening for you all this family energy it's like maybe you know you've been i don't know dating someone who lives you know in harlem and you're down in you know the financial district that's a that's short distance well that's like an hour all right that's like an hour on the subway but now you may be Part of this process is now you're building this structure where y'all are moving in together. It, so there's a lot of different things that can happen, but just pay attention to, you know, what you want. All right. What you want. And I love this full moon. I love this. I, sure. I love it. I don't care that it's squaring Neptune because remember what I said, as long as you're honest with yourself and you know what you want, 
you're going to be fine. Mars is sextiling Mercury. You're going to be fine. Mars is a traditional ruler that's in your seventh house of partnerships and relationships. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Mercury and Cancer in your ninth house, spirituality, your belief system, how you see things. Yeah, you're going to be fine. There's going to be, uh, you know, maybe like a different way that you see things around this time. And the moon will actually be in Capricorn all weekend. And so actually that's going to be really big because on Saturday, the moon will trine Mars. Sunday, the moon will trine Uranus. Mm, hello. Amazing. Trines are extremely extraordinarily <laughs> auspicious they're really 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 nice and and harmonious and uh so uh, and you know those two planets are in your seventh house of, uh, of partnerships and relationships and you know there could be some career moments for y'all too i wouldn't be surprised uh like uh you definitely may be feeling that okay with the north node and aries in your sixth house so uh either way really big week really big week you're the big shifts happening for you scorpio so why don't we get started let's see what's going on for you for the week of june 17th to the 23rd again for scorpio scorpio rising scorpio moon and if you want to read for any other placements in your chart you are absolutely welcome to so scorpio let's get to it see what's going on for you for june 17th to the 23rd now uh yes you have a guest i said ruby missed you she wanted to be up here in your readings uh she wanted to know what's going on for scorpios all right team scorpio and i do a traditional cult of christ spread it really does offer the best overview if we need to pull clarifiers you know we thought we will you know that we will and i am actually doing your uh recording at a different time during the day so i know the light's a little uh different but you can still see right can you see this you can see okay so let's get started all right so scorpio what a week you are definitely going to be something is coming to an end something's coming to an end in a really big way and you're going to have to this this full moon in capricorn but also all this you know this squaring neptune you're going to have to really really think about uh this new structure you're building in your life and that's the other thing okay Saturn, we just we're having those Saturn squares, and then Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn for this full moon in Capricorn. So this is you building these new structures of your life, prioritizing these structures in your life. And you see that here. You see that here. All right. So let's get started. You got justice. Really amazing. I love the fact that you got justice. You're thinking about it. It's now you're moving forward because you could have received that justice. I say that you were thinking about it because if you think about your last week reading you had justice in your crown all right so uh there you go uh, this is really amazing so this is justice being served it could be something with legal matters uh i wouldn't be surprised if some of y'all got married to or had some sort of like something with relationships uh that really sealed things uh, a lot of wisdom with the justice card but it's taking action okay now, here's the thing with justice, it's also, which is Libra, by the way, which rules partnerships and relationships. So still could be some something on your mind. OK, again, whether work, it, whatever resonates with you. OK, uh, but there is something that uh, it seems like uh, you've really got to take that action. OK, now, uh, because sure, actions have consequences, but inaction have consequences, too. And you always want to take you ought to be. Uh, be the narrator of your story right now you have the ten of wands and the heart of your spread so yeah 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 is it this week where you uh probably shouldn't distract yourself remember what i said neptune is illusion delusion confusion escapism are you doing that this week? Are you uh, hiding from things that you know, like a conversation you probably have to have or a contract you have to end or something? There's something that you're like, okay, I'm just going to skate on by. I'm just going to skate on by. But just keep that in mind. There is something that feels like this is a week where you could just be uh, very, very just, uh, you know, uh, just doing your own thing. And it may be too much for you. Okay. It may be too much for you. There's a lot of burden that comes with the 10 of wands. Now, listen, I do not know how much wands weigh. Okay. And tarot, but I know how much bamboo weighs in real life and they're heavy and he's carrying them all alone. 10 of them. Okay. The other thing is he don't know where he's going. He's distracting himself. He's distracting himself. Look, all you got to do is drop a wand or two and you'll be able to see. He can't see. Okay. 
drop something that you know needs to go, okay? Drop something that you know needs to go. And you may be starting to feel that heart energy. And I really want you to use that heart energy because you do have the four cups, okay, in your uh, challenge area. So it's really opening up, okay? Opening up your chakras, opening up your heart chakra. The reason I say that actually is because, uh, well, one of the reasons, the four cups is actually attributed to moon and uh, cancer. So a cancer card, remember, it rules your ninth house of spirituality, the way that you see things, okay? So there's something where you have to open yourself up to, okay, instead of being distracted from it, all right? Ten is the end of the suit, all right? So that's a, it's a great time because uh, you have that choice. You have that choice to drop something that you know is not working for you anymore. All right. And 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 it don't do anything that may be too burdensome or, you know, even like burnout energy could be coming up. But there may your motivation possibly for for if if you find yourself, you know, distracting yourself or feeling like uh escapism or whatnot, is because there could have been something that happened that hasn't come through yet or something that you weren't really satisfied with. But remember, this is a weekly reading. Everything that you want is coming. As long as you put your energy out there, vibrate at a high frequency. I say it all the time. We're all made of energy. You want to attract the things that you want to attract and they will come through your energy. All right. Now you have the six of cups, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, a card of like, you know, feeling free and just silly even, and is it basically putting your guard down. All right. That's what you want. All right. There's a big, it's a, it's a big card of, uh, you know, things harmonizing for you. And this is actually going to be very true to you because, uh, this card is attributed to sun and Scorpio. So it's one of your cards. All right. But it's this kindness and this generosity and there's this feel good energy long hair don't care like i like really really you see the two kids here tapping into your inner child all right so you definitely it does feel like there is something where uh you may be uh uh wanting to get to that place okay where you feel a lot more free and you feel unburdened all right so just remember drop a wand or two drop a wand or two there's something new about to happen for you you also got uh the uh, hermit all right in the root of your spread so very interesting it's saying that you are definitely going through some soul searching moments and it can have to do about your future the hermit is virgo virgo rules your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams okay so this is doing that deep soul searching remember all this cancer energy but throw in your the moon and your sign for the first half of the week really diving deep okay you may do a deep dive because you may realize there is something you've got to let go and the full moon in capricorn is going to require it now speaking of full moon you see that it's happening here in your future so listen this card by the way uh you know the moon in tarot is attributed to pisces right in astrology it's cancer in tarot it's uh pisces and so remember you've got neptune okay sun squaring neptune up soon in your fifth house of pleasure love uh joy relationships things like that things like that there is something that you might be uh you know creating a little bit of fear around there could be something uh that you and when i say that listen fear is fiction it is something that we just create in our head so recognize that there may be something that you really need to de do that deep soul searching for and then you're going to come out on top you're going to shine okay now remember what i also said about that full moon that we have capricorn all about structures there are some old structures you see those two towers here representing those old structures that possibly need to okay remember you've cancer season is all about your ninth house about the way that you see things your philosophies and things it things need to change there could be some structures that you built you know in the past but think about like a bridge that was built like back in you know 1468 it's got to need some, yeah, it's not going to hold. It's, it's, you got to just redo some structures, okay? That is what this full moon is in Capricorn is asking for you to do. Prioritize these structures and don't be afraid about things. Really do that deep soul searching and trust your intuition. I'm going to show you something here that will help you understand that. You see um, the moon, card 18, 1, 8 equals 9, referencing the hermit okay now guess whose face is in that moon the hermit so go within that's you've got all this wisdom inside you you got a lot of wisdom here all right so it's a matter of like bringing it out and i'll even do a clarifier for you 
Yeah, you're going to be fine. Uh, so please, can you trust me, Scorpio? Like I, when I say things are going to be good for you and there's going to be change that's happening. Ten is the end of the suit. You're moving into this new change. This week is a big shift in this new change, this new story that's happening for you. You just got the fool. All right. Just clarify the moon. You get past this. You're going to be in this new journey in your life. I mean, this is a full kicking off the full journey. All right. This is you uh, uh, it, it, eliminating those things, even structures, but anything that's been holding you back or anything that, you know, is not you don't want to take on this new journey with you. All right. Leaving in the past. That's what the fool is. OK, two things here. He's standing on the edge of the cliff, not even looking down. This one is someone who's ready to go. He's got uh, 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 so much confidence. He's taking risks, okay? What is taking risks? It builds confidence, puts confidence. It's taking risks, okay? You also see his satchel. It's because he's zero, card zero. What comes before zero? Nothing, nothing. He's only taking the essentials, okay? Everything else, leaving it in the past. You see all that sunlight here, all right? Abundance, opportunity, optimism. Your new things are happening for you. Scorpio, let's get to your stuff. Oh my goodness, Scorpio. Uh, Y'all, if you like this reading, would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Tell me what's going on. L tell me what's going on. There's so. Tell me what's ending. Tell me what's beginning. I know a lot of y'all want this new path. It's shown right here, so... Uh, yeah, it's in a big way. You're going to be fine. You're going to be good. You're going to be absolutely good. I'm very excited for you, Scorpio. Uh, you got temperance. I love that. Um, very, very nice. You know, temperance, it's it's just saying that, you know, especially with the moon in your future, all it's saying, temperance, well, first of all, you've got an archangel. you got two archangels, okay? You're protected. You're fine. You're, got, you're, you're good to go. Temperance is saying just don't if you have any anxiety if you have any distress if you're worried about your future with you know the moon card which that brings that up remember trust do that soul search and trust your intuition that's going to make the big difference you even see the golden disc on the archangel's forehead the pineal gland all right your third eye your sixth sense trust your intuition but it's also saying have that patience remember this is a month of having patience and just enjoying yourself in the moment in the now that's what enlightenment is okay knowing that everything is going to happen for you all right everyone's on a path everyone's on a path and you're all going to get there some are you know paths are a little curvy as you can see here but this card is saying you're going to be fine, okay? Because if you worry about your future, if you stress about your future, you make your path longer, okay? And Scorpio, I want you to ask yourself, when was the last time worrying or stressing about something did anything good for me at all? Never, never, right? So this is just that gentle reminder. Um, if you are, again, thinking about like, you know, stressing about your future, whatever, things like that. Instead of that, think about whatever your finish line is, whatever your goal is, think about how good it will feel when you reach it, okay? Now, you also have judgment. Absolutely love this. And your external factors, another archangel, Archangel Gabriel blowing the trumpet. This is that spiritual awakening, which you will definitely have this week uh, with, with uh, it, it, even like throughout the month, with cancer, all this energy and cancer in your ninth house of spirituality. So I absolutely love this for you. It's like there's got to be this moment like we're just like, oh, I get what I need to do. I get who I am. I get what direction I want to go. Any of those, any of those, whatever resonates with you, okay? But know that this is a lot of healing in this card and uh, could have to do, again, with your domestic sector. Remember, you have so much stuff happening at, at home and family and relationships and love and things that you, your domestic sector, like I said, uh, judgment attributed to Pluto, your uh, modern ruler, your ruling planet. All right. So remember, Pluto is an Aquarius in your fourth house or domestic sector. Now you have the five of wands, you know, where it sits here. It's just saying like, you just want to get out of that headspace. It's just like, ah, and the five of wands is a very, uh, not worth your time card. It's five it's just kids swinging their wands in the air. Okay. That's all it is. It's so not worth your time. And so if you are having a lot of like tug of war in your head, it's like you're, that's the last thing that you want. It's the last thing that you want. And then the last card that you got is the three of wands. You're good. You're absolutely good. You're ready to go. You're ready to go and do it. I want you to, you know, he's leaving his village. He's leaving his village. That was a big deal back in, you know, the medieval times to leave your village, to go explore, 
to go explore, see what was out there. Huge, huge. Okay. So three, the birth of new things, creation, something new happening in your life. Okay. Something really big. All right. Because remember you got 10 is the end. You got the full, this new journey that you're about to embark on. It's all about you taking that first step. Okay. You see the sky, all sky here. The sky's the limit. This is all about growing, advancing, you know, becoming the best version of yourself, but also going out there to not only discover what waits for you. All right. But a lot of self-discovery too. All right. Especially with cancer in ninth house of spirituality. So there's that sense of, yeah, you are going to be doing that deep soul search in, but you are, you really have a lot to look forward to. It's just breaking down some structures. Okay. A lot of it could be up here, breaking down those structures that no longer work for you anymore. All right. So Scorpio, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, would be great if you do uh, the, uh, all that fun algorithm stuff. Yeah, all the fun algorithm stuff. And next week, we got some great aspects. We got some really great aspects. I would not be surprised if a lot of y'all get married. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of y'all got married, uh, go on big trips. I wouldn't be surprised if you start new relationships. There's some some things happen. Start, sign a contract. Wouldn't be surprised. Okay. Uh, thanks so much, Scorpio. I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.